we were uh, we were very in tune uh, with, with both those with those players and. Um, you know, I, I think I can speak for us and putting our best foot forward. And uh, they landed uh, elsewhere. And um, but I think that obviously impactful players. But you know, as an organization, you just got to continue to move forward. And um, we've got a pretty good nucleus already. And uh, obviously intrigued by those two players. But uh, we're we're moving on. When you speak of the nucleus, you guys don't have a lot of glaring holes heading into. What, if anything, are you targeting and what would you like to see as far as any acquisitions or changes being made? I think the thing that with with our ball club, um, the pitching component, the athleticism, the youth, uh, mixed with some veterans, um, you can always bolster the bullpen. I think that for us and our guys that we've been very good at kind of uh, identifying guys with some upside in the pen. Uh, you look back a couple years ago, Joe Blanton. Uh, last year, Brandon Morrow. Um, so continuing to add depth in, in the pen, I think is important uh, to have Kenley at the back end. But again, it, it's hard to poke holes in our ball club. Uh, but as an organization, that's what you constantly try to do. It appears Brandon Morrow is going to play uh, Your thought about who fills up those innings, and did you think that would be such a vacancy when you guys put him on the roster just so he couldn't go someplace else? No, and, and to his credit, he capitalized on the opportunity and, and pitched big innings for us, obviously, and got some big outs. Um, but you do look at the guys that we have coming back, guys who are active, guys who are coming off injury. Um, I still think that there's uh, a good deal of depth that we have in our pen. Um, Singrani coming back from the left side and some other right-handers that we have. So I think that the depth is there. And the way we match up and play the game to shorten it, to count outs, um, I think that I still think that we're still in a good spot. Do you feel like you're in a much better position heading into this next season than you were perhaps this last off season when you guys had some significant holes? Yeah, um, you know, you look at what um, on the position player side, guys that uh, are are young or youthful that have really emerged as impact players that we really didn't know we had uh, last year, and to see Corey Seager to follow up a. a rookie campaign with another good one to know that he's going into his third year and to see what Cody did and Chris Taylor um, getting tolls back and to see Yasiel really assert himself last year. So uh, the catching uh, situation I think you can argue is as productive as any in baseball. Um, and yeah, I think the pitching side to see uh, Alex Wood emerge, you know, Kent to do his thing and obviously the guys that we have with Rich and, and uh, Clayton at the top of the pen. Um, yeah, I, I do believe that we're in a better spot than we were last year. And this is a team that won 104 games, and you're still trying to find a way to get better. Dave, how do you envision the, the Marino team in December, but how, how would you envision the catching situation working out? Well, I, I think, uh, again, as a sum, I think that it's as good as anyone in baseball. Um, then now you're you're sort of dealing with the uh, individual successes on on. on for both players that you've got to be sensitive to um, because we feel that they can both be everyday players. Um, Austin's ability to um, play some second base I think helps him, creates opportunity for himself. Um, but you know where we're at right now, uh, having both those guys on board with the Dodgers being part of our club uh, is important, is imperative, and uh, right now, that's where we stand. Dave, what do you envision Walker Bueller for being the club in 2018? Um, I can certainly expect to expect to see him as a starter. Um, you know, how things shake out in spring training will kind of determine where he starts. But for him to continue to develop as a starting pitcher, um, got his feet wet last year, and I think that it was uh, encouraging in a lot of ways for Walker. Um, quality of hitter, uh, the speed of the game, the preparation, being in big league ballparks, I think all very good for him. Um, but just continuing to develop. And so uh, again, we'll see where how it all shakes out, but uh, he's definitely a part of the solution. If his knee cooperates and he is healthy, is Tolsey your left fielder going into the season? 
um, well, he, he uh, in a smaller sample, um, two years ago, really played well on both sides of the baseball. And so we expect him to be fully recovered going into spring training and to compete. So I, I don't think that um, it's fair for us to essentially, uh, you know, outside of Yasiel, um, Chris Taylor, who still has the ability to play in the infield and, and the outfield, um, dedicate 500 or call them an everyday player. So I think that we still have to see a little bit more. But the skill set, a lot to like from Andrew. Where does uh, Peter and Gonzalez fit anymore? Where do you see the still reasonable uh, I see him on our team right now. Um, and, and Adrian, you don't get to be the player that he is um, if you can't uh, overcome some adversities. Obviously, this is a different part of part in his different time in his career, and you're dealing with injuries. But I've had conversations with Adrian, and um, he'll definitely bet on himself, and he's healthy, and looks to uh, compete to get at bats. Um, as we understand that things can happen throughout the winter, but right now I, I don't see um, I see Adrian on our ball club and contributing. Um, I don't. I don't. I, I know that um, about a month ago things were tracking the right way. Um, doctors were encouraged. So I know that we're a little cautious in trying to give a timeline for his return. But I know that um, we expect to see him pitch at some point in time this year. Doc, within the, uh, within the division, the Robbie Ray gave you some problems. If you, you told us he you unlocked the code in the playoffs <laughs> against him. Uh, what was the code? Are you prepared to reveal how you, how you go against them? No. What I, dominate you? Uh, I'm not ready to divulge that. But uh, no. Uh, you know what? Robbie, obviously, he gave us fits and, and elite pitcher. And I think part of it was the short rest, something that he had never done, obviously, in the playing game or in the wild card game. Um, and, and that was just one given night that our guys really put forth some really good at bats. Hey Dave, the, uh, the Astros, I forgot, said they uh, picked up some pitch tipping from your daughter's in the World Series. Is that something that at the time you guys were uh, concerned about, or did you feel like it was surprising? <clears throat> I was, uh, wasn't surprised. Uh, we, we had conversations about that with you and uh, trying to kind of uh, pin it down. Obviously, uh, we weren't successful. So um, I think that there's, there's something to that, but there's also a lot more for me to execution, where I think that you could ask you that there just wasn't a lot of execution going on. So I don't know. I know there was talk, some talk about it, the t tip pitching and things like that, but uh, Still boils down to executing pitches. Dave, I don't know what player you might have thought about possibly when you're a coach. Everybody wants to find out if their ideas, if their stuff is going to work. Are you personality-wise, what you thought it would be? Is, did you envision sort of how you handled it, the way that you thought you would handle it? Did you get a chance? Um, I, th I think that as you, as I became a coach, you start thinking about it, maybe as a player a little bit, and you really never know how it's going to play out. But I think that uh, empowering people, trusting people, having good people around you, having good players certainly helps. Um, and I think me by nature, I, I think that I just love conversations, uh, being challenged, forward thinking, things like that, that our guys, this this organization kind of thinks similarly in that like, that aspect. So in that sense, yeah, it's played out like I'd hoped. Hey Dave, having a, uh, hey Bob? Good. Having started your managerial career in LA, big market, how, much, how challenging will it be, you think, for an Aaron Boone and Alex Cole to be protecting that division in those two months? I think that the I think the biggest challenge, and I talked to both guys, um, 
the biggest challenge is for them to uh, be who they are and trust them. I think that um, in a market, in a bigger market that I could speak to, um, you just have certain um, beliefs or thoughts or process how you go day to day and how you kind of navigate a day or ma navigate a game or conversations with people and you've got to be true to yourself because I think that sometimes it can get a little blurred um, with uh, expectations um, and that's a tough way to go when you're chasing results. Right, Andy? It's tough, man. Last time, what you want, what you're looking for, bullpen coach, and just the vacancy that Bardo leaves. Um, did we announce that uh, Juan Castro was gone too? No. Did announce it? Sorry, Joe. Um, yeah, so we essentially have two spots to fill. Um, how are we going to do it? You know, Juan Castro was our seventh coach. He took a different position. Uh, <laughs> Uh, outside of the country, I guess we can assume what country, um, <laughs> Castro. Uh, so um, that and then the bullpen coach, so we have a couple different jobs to fill, positions to fill, so we're kind of talking through that right now. So what vacancy does Bardo leave, what did you bring? Bardo, um, we're, it's a big void, it's a big void, just like one, but um, the ability to take information from the front office yeah, yeah. and sequencing game planning uh, for the pitchers uh, specifically the guys in the pen uh, working with the catchers and with with uh, rick honeycutt um, having a game plan each and every night helping me kind of being able to deploy guys in the pen in the right part of the lineup and, and things like that so um uh he, he's going to be missed Wait, so uh, good guess, good guess. A little bit more north, a little bit northwest, Mexico. That's right. Nice try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice try. Ed. That's right. That was my fault. Student of history, not geography. That's right. I'm a history major. Should have known. Dave, Alex Verdugo is a guy who, throughout his minor league career, his maturity and effort level have been questioned at times. Moment where he was late with you in the majors. How have you seen him grow or his stint at all here once he got the major league stint? Um, I, I've seen him grow uh, tremendously, and this guy has never been questioned his talent, um, his work ethic, and he's a young player. And so there's some kind of judgment things that there's been some maybe lapses in judgment, um, but his character, work ethic uh, has, has never been in question, but he's really grown. and. Being around in September, seeing guys prepare each day and establishing some relationships with the, with the major league players, coaches, I enjoyed having him around. And I think sometimes in games I found him next to me more than I did his teammates. So I enjoyed kind of keeping him engaged and our bench coach, Bob Guerin, but um, he's going to be a good player for a long time. Last two you guys had a significant increase in fly ball rate and obviously some run totals as well. Was that something that you were... Was that something that you were able to essentially coach your players into? Was that you know a product of normal development, or, or is baseball at a place where you're kind of where you are kind of game planning to create more power? In the I think that's the uh, that's probably the, the main point uh, when you're talking about the pitching aspect and then the hitting aspect. So as far as our hitters understand information and they read uh, as much as we do. So when you're starting to understand that a ball on the ground is essentially an out, so they made adjustments in their mechanics approach to, to elevate the baseball that's going to turn into more fly balls, more homers, uh, some swing and miss. And on the other side, um, you know, with certain guys that can elevate the baseball, spin rate characteristics, uh, velocity, we try to promote pitching up top of the zone, so you're going to get some more pop-ups and things like that uh, against other teams. So it's kind of the way the game's kind of evolved a little bit. Is there any kind of reluctance to, you know, to tinker with guys' swings to fundamentally change how they might be approaching hitting? Or are you at the point where you, where this has been proven to be a sufficiently coachable, you know, adaptable technique? 
that reluctance to find places? Um, well, I think it's it, it's um, you have to be open open to changing, and I think that you can see the guys that um, that don't adjust they have a tougher time. Um, speaking to the offensive side as far as uh, pulling the ball on the ground, you know, with the, with the information now, uh, you have to adjust and slug plays on base plays. Um, so you're seeing guys. You know, beat the shift by way of bun or hitting a ball the other way, which the numbers do speak to. If you can do that on the ground, the averages are higher. Um, but still, elevating the baseball seems like the best the best way um, hitters can be productive. Dave, sorry to bring up the World Series again. But, uh, how long does it take to get over something like that, and how does that sort of feed the motivation for the next season? Um, to get over it. I was over it just a second ago. <laughs> Thanks. Um, gosh. I don't know if you ever get over it. Uh, especially, you know, you go to game seven and a lot of things could have been different. Pitch here, pitch there, maybe change the outcome. But, uh, you know, you still go through your mind and what you could have done possibly different to potentially influence it. But at the end of the day, it is what it is, and you learn from it. Um, and you got to get back up and get back up to the top of the mountain. And um, it is good knowing that we have a lot of guys that have been a part of some big games um, in the last few years, some very meaningful games, and there's a lot of value in that. Um, so I'd argue that our guys are as hungry as anybody in all of baseball uh, to be that close. So um, we'll be right there in the mix again. What do you feel you learned from? Yeah, how was uh, you feel you right? I'm going to get back to your question. Okay. Yeah, this is, might be an easier question. Sorry, I couldn't hear no, you. No, 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 I want to hear your question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> how is uh, Julio Urias progressing? Uh, Julio is uh, progressing well. I haven't got an update the last yeah. month, but... Uh, He'll be playing catch. He has been playing catch, and um, where he's at come spring training or when he's going to pitch, uh, as far as uh, in a game, I, I can't speak that right now. Let's do it some other time, Andy. <laughs> you, you mentioned talking to Boone before. Uh, you know, when you were interviewing for the Dodgers managerial job, with a team that clearly had competitive ambitions, playoff ambitions, do you feel like you have overcome any bias against first-time managers in order to be given that job? Is that, you know, are you surprised to see the number of first-time guys in the American playoffs? Um, am I surprised? Um, yes. Um, but the guys that uh, have been put in place, I, I think very highly of. Um, I didn't put too much stock into my personal situation uh, as far as opinions. It was more of it was going to happen quick and you're trying to um, connect with as many people within the organization as possible um, to get some, some type of um, momentum going into spring training. So that's kind of was my path and then through spring training and then here's the season. So you don't have a whole lot of time to kind of take on other people's opinions. You're just really trying to get in touch, get in tune with, with uh, the players in the organization. Were you surprised that some of the young guys have success as quickly as they do? I know there's specialization now more than ever before. Guys like coaches, 14, 15, 16. Is that sort of what we're seeing now, because there sure seems to be a lot of 21, 22 year olds in the play. Um, I am surprised at that, at that too. Um, but you look at these players and around the league, gosh, I mean, there's countless players that, are, you know, the 21 to 23 that are just so uber talented. And it's fun to watch. And I think that the game right now, the talent level is as high as I've ever seen it. Um, there is a lot of coaching going on, and not to take anything away from coaches of other decades, but when you're having a, a 20, 21-year-old, 22-year-old 
playing in the big leagues and that veteran player is no longer on your roster um, as a backup player. Those kind of backfilled now by young players. And so the coaches are, are taking on roles that they, that uh, you know, love to teach and, and those type of roles, which is they're meant to do their job. But the talent level, it, it's fun to watch. It, it, the game's in a great place. Is there a danger in looking at guys that are 26 and 27 and all of a sudden they're old and not necessarily, there can be late bloomers or later bloomers. Uh, is there a nervousness that you could actually miss on a guy just because it's taken a little bit longer than some of these other guys? Um, th I think that th there's there's a little bit to that, but if you look at the teams that uh, win every year, there's a balance, and those 27 to 30 year old players, and you look at our ball club, or maybe even to 37, uh, but you look at um, you know even the Astros, you look at the guys that were some of the glue guys that they had were those type players. And so you mix those young Correas and, and those other guys, um, you know, the Springers with some other guys, and, and we had that same mix. And a lot of the, the good clubs have that. The Yankees, I mean, they're all kind of like that. So I think that these clubs aren't missing on those guys either. If Adrian's healthy and he is with you in spring training, would you put Bellinger in the outfield or even permanent? The thing about um, Cody, which uh, if you look at our roster, we have a lot of versatility. And um, so Cody's right up there as far as versatility. And at his age, the ability to play anywhere in the outfield um, for the right player, for the right reason, which makes sense for our ball club. And obviously, um, Adrian, under contract, proven uh, performer, all-star. Um, we expect him to be healthy going into spring. So yeah, if Adrian performs the way we would expect, then Cody certainly gives us that uh, flexibility. And um, we've always been a, a team of depth, and um, it always sort of um, we always have to seems seems like you always have to tap into it at some point in time. So right now on December 12th to talk about it, um, <clears throat> I think is a good thing for us. <laughs> Cody, I guess, just to work on the outfield going into spring just so he's loose, or is that just a normal part of his process? Um, I don't think that – I haven't had that conversation with Cody. I think that's a part of his process. And uh, he's a very intelligent uh, young man, so um, I'm sure he'll have his outfield glove on. And when we get to spring training, we'll run him out there as well to see how things play out. Dave, there's a uh, – Talented group of arms at first double A last year, Mitchell White, Dennis Lincoln, the Yadier Alvarez. Have you gotten a chance to look at any of them and strikes or opportunities or anything? And any thoughts on if any of them you expect to see contributing next year? Um, yeah, well, uh, obviously at the top of that list is uh, is Walker Bueller, and we mentioned him a little bit earlier. Uh, Mitchell White, abbreviated year last year with a uh, random freak injury. Um, but we saw him a little bit in spring last year, really big stuff. Um, uh, Dennis Santana, another guy that uh, has a big arm, um, Alvarez. So we, we've got some good thing, Ferguson, the lefty. Um, so we got some guys that could do some things. So uh, to what extent they're going to contribute with us, uh, that remains to be seen for 18. Yeah, I think that um, it's a it's a shortened season, off season. Um, I think that we're going to manage the, the load a little bit. You know, actually, I was talking to uh, a couple people in our front office and talking about certain players specifically about um, kind of backing off those guys uh, and getting them ready essentially the last week of the season. So, yeah, just really being mindful of, of that. Um, guys like Kenley, probably slow playing him a little bit, um, and also on the position player side. Do they have different report dates then? Uh, no. I think they're going to have the same report dates as far as position versus pitchers. Um, but once they get into camp, 
just kind of maybe put them on the backfield and, and take care of their arms and the position players, just kind of monitor their at-bats, <coughs> keep them off their legs a little bit more. Uh, next year is going to be Kenta's third year, and uh, he said he learns a lot from this year, the and stuff. Uh, uh, we expect Kent to be back in back in the rotation, um, and I think that the thing for Kent uh, is, um, I think that he really built confidence in pitching out of the pen, and I think that that right there, I think will help him as a starter in the sense of abbreviating his uh, preparation for a start. Um, and talking to Rick Honeycutt, when starters go to the pen and they have to get ready quicker, it helps them if they go back to that starter role that it doesn't take this long, long process to get ready and understand you can still go out there and perform. So I think that uh, with guys like, and even, and even Clayton, you know, to see what he did out of the pen and see how quick you can get loose and still be really effective. I think that there's something to be said for that. But speaking specifically to Kenta, yeah, I, I think that um, he's going to go back to being a starter for us. Do you see Maeda possibly filling a role like Bradley did with Arizona? Um, not so much as a, as a setup guy, but, but as an effective role player out of the bullpen eventually. Do you see something like that in him? Uh, well, that's essentially how we use him in the postseason. Um, but Bradley... Um, was essentially a one-inning guy for the most part. You know, there were a handful of multi-inning stints for him. But with Kent, I think that for us right now, uh, as the season starts, we see the value uh, for him to log more.